All right. Hi, guys. I'm Lauren House with Beyond the House. Uh, We're on the Social Nostra Network. And today we are talking with an ex-athlete. He's a former uh, Major League Baseball player named Jeff Blum. And I brought him onto the show today because as somebody who goes on dates, the first question that just makes me freeze in my tracks is, so do you like sports? And even though it's not like a real right or wrong answer I have to give, it still just makes me feel like, okay, well, I got to be on the spectrum. Like, what's the spectrum? So want to introduce Jeff first and give us a little bit of your history, please. Uh, First of all, thank you for having me on. It's great. And uh, yeah, I played 14 years in Major League Baseball. I went to the University of California for baseball and then spent my career going to six different teams. And oddly enough, I finished my career with the Arizona Diamondbacks. So a little connection there with uh, what you've got going on out in Arizona, Lauren. But uh, I am now currently retired. I retired in 2012. And for the last eight years, I have been working on the television broadcast team for the Houston Astros. And I have my own podcast on our social Nostra network, along with you called Bleacher Blums. And as somebody, since we're going down this road, who doesn't really pay attention to sports, as we're about to find out, I actually have watched your podcast and I enjoy them. I, for some reason, they just, I connect with them and I think that they're great. So for all of you girls who maybe are not so into sports, but want to stay up with it just a Thank little you. bit, check. Yeah, seriously. I told you the first time I met you, I, I watched one and I, and I enjoyed it. So I, I appreciate um, you saying that. Thank you. That's encouraging. Yeah, yeah absolutely. So I guess what I want to know, because... You are in a successful marriage, but it didn't start like that. So my question is, when if you can rewind the times, when you're dating somebody in the very preliminary stages, and you that question does come up, whether it's not, a, it doesn't have to be the most direct question, do you like sports, but sometimes it is. It just comes up, you know, do you watch sports, who are your teams, all that kind of stuff. And you have a girl who's got Obviously, we have a wide spectrum. We have a girl who's uninterested. You have a girl in the middle who's me. Like, I'm like, I'll go like put on a baseball hat with you, drink some beer and cheer for whoever you want me to cheer for. Then you have the girls who just like hit it out of the park and they know all the players and the stats and the games and whatever else you need to know about any sport, which is to me like, whoa, whoa. So where on the spectrum do all these girls fall, if that makes sense? And what do you, what do you think of it? Like, what's a good answer to this question? Do you like sports? I think when a guy asks, do you like sports? It's, it's a, it's a couple, you know, underlying questions. It's more or less, will you let me watch sports when I want to <laughs> is basically the question, <laughs> you know, cause uh, every guy fears that they're, you know, Oh, why is she harping on me? Why is she asking me if I'm watching sports? Why is she asking me if I'm going to the bar with the boys to go watch sports? So I think that's kind of the underlying. And then the other part is, you know, are you cool enough to go watch sports with me and be okay with that? Um, but, uh, you know, when I was dating before I got married, I had always had that, uh, you know, that reputation of being an athlete. So everybody just, the assumption is he likes sports and obviously baseball is one of my passions. And, uh, but I actually like watching football, basketball. It's kind of, it's kind of been just football lately, but, uh, you know, I didn't really put that on the girls I was dating, but I know that part of the woman that I would attract or the girl I would attract would be the one that was a little more interested in sports because they knew my background, you know, in college, uh, dated a basketball player, you know, in, uh, you know, coming up through the minor leagues, it was always somebody that was maybe a sports reporter or around the game a little bit or understood that I had access to the game. So I kind of attracted that until I met my wife who had absolutely no idea what I could possibly be doing for a living. And it turned out to be the most successful relationship I've had. How sweet is that? So it was almost like a breath of fresh air. Yeah, it was. And, you know, the expectation was more on us as people, I think, as opposed to, you know, what, uh, you know, how am I going to impose my will or love of sports on this person? It was more, you know, wow, she's interested in this and she's a great conversation. She understands that. And she's not constantly wondering, you know, how much I'm making or what level it, in minor leagues am I at? Am I ever going to make it as a major leaguer? She actually took interest as me in me as Jeff, as opposed to Jeff, the ball player. Am I allowed to drop the J word? <laughs> 
This is not for Jersey Chasers. (laughs) No, you can't. Cleat Chasers, Jersey Chasers. This podcast is not for the Jersey Chasers. This is not what this is about. How do I get a baseball player? That's not what this is about. (laughs) Yeah, I would say take interest in the guy first and then everything else will follow. (laughs) So as, and I know this is a little off topic, but as a baseball player, did you always wonder that question? Like, does this person like me for who I am? Or did you think they were just trying to connect with you on baseball because they have dated previous athletes? Were they trying to impress you? Like, what does that look like? I think it's always for, for an athlete. I think it's always an underlying question mark is, you know, why does this girl like me? Is she in into it because I get to travel all over the country and play baseball? Is it because of the paycheck? Is it because, you know, that he looks good in a uniform? You know, what is Probably it? Probably that one. <laughs> yeah. Well, I found out later in my relationship that that definitely helped my 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 uh, possibility with my current wife. So I do uh, encourage you to wear that thing appropriately. But, you know, there is always that underlying question. And, uh, you know, if that's the only thing that the relationship is relying on, I think it's just built for failure, you know, if that's the one aspect. So uh, that's one thing I learned it, early on is that uh, if both of us were focused on what I thought the other person liked, I, I was pretty much screwed. Yeah. I feel like that's a little bit of selling your soul to the devil. Like you just start getting into a relationship for the wrong thing and mainly for status, because as the female, you're, unless you're running in the same circles and dating somebody, like you said, a a, a host, what are they called? Uh, like a, what? Like a, a network. Oh, like a, I, I, well, yeah. TV broadcaster. I say yeah, there you go. analyst, but it, it doesn't, you have to say it perfectly or else it comes out really wrong. Say what perfectly? Analyst. Oh, (laughs) yeah, one of them. I'm just going to let you say that. (laughs) Yeah. So I I prefer color commentator because I'm usually the guy that's telling the colorful story from my past and experience in in the game of baseball. So, yeah, I I, I try to be uh, entertaining and and humorous and bring some levity to sometimes uh, long baseball games. I think you do a good job. I mean, like I said, I watch your podcast. I think you're interesting. So thank you. You're welcome. So that was a really good answer. The whole like guys are actually just curious if they can get out of the house, go watch the baseball. They're (laughs) going to be given hell for it. Right. But that also, so what does that look like as a girl who has no interest? You kind of know what's coming. Like, I feel like you, you know, that there's going to be, some tension there. Like, Oh, you're going to watch another game or like you just went last night or something like that. But if you have the girl who's totally into sports and wants to go to every game with you, like, is that too much? That's a good question because, you know, because I mean, I would imagine in most relationships, I mean, I'm not the expert on this, but I would imagine there's moments where you, you know, you you need your, your, that moment of getting away or unplugging, I'm not sure what the right word is, but that moment of uh, getting out of the situation and getting into maybe just a little more reckless environment and uh, let it loose a little bit with the boys. And if your girl keeps showing up, yes, it's a great thing, I think. But uh, at the same time, uh, you know, is it too much? You know, I don't know what that line is. I think it's all individual, but at the same time, you know, you kind of hinted at the fact well, you went out with your guys the last two nights in a row. What about tonight? Is it my time? And when I think when we start keeping track of score on both sides, that's where you kind of run into issues and that's where the competition kind of comes in. But it's also the guy on one side going, okay, I've been out for a couple nights. It's okay. It's your night. If you want to go out with the girls and have a good time and do your thing, you've got to be equally as understanding if you're a guy, if your girl is being understanding of you going out a couple of nights with the boys and watching a ton of sports, or if you have all your guys over and the TV is constantly on football or golf or, you know, whatever it may be, there's got to be a certain understanding where you kind of look out of your peripheral vision and make sure that everything's okay over there and that you're not pushing it too far because you're, I think we can both agree that sometimes just that simple idea of putting sports in between two people can wreck it. It can. Um, So I did not grow up in a, in a house where we had sports on all the time. And in college, I dated this guy from Ohio and I remember heavily complaining to everybody. I'm like, I do not understand why he has to watch so much football. I did not understand it. I truly did not. And now I'm on the other side. I'm like, oh, dude, if you do not watch football, not hot. Like this is, you're now you're just not masculine enough, right? So it kind of like planted this seed. And I do think there's a happy medium, but I'm also not the girl 
who can go hang out and speak and be informed and cheer for the right team as I did in the last relationship. He's like, you were totally cheering for the wrong team and cost me the game. I'm like, well, that wasn't my fault that the guy ran it bad or whatever it was. <laughs> but I, I just, and maybe that's my own self-consciousness because I'm not familiar enough. So I'm going to be the girlfriend that goes and sits and drinks some beer and I'll talk when I'm allowed because, you know, you don't want to interrupt anything. So if you have the type of, like your wife, it sounds like is not, is she's not into doing all the sports, you, right? <laughs> <laughs> and you're allowed to go do your thing. And I'm assuming it doesn't cause a fight because that's who you are. Like that's, a, that's who you are to the core. So she has to be understanding that you want to go do that. I'm sure she's welcome to come, but it's like, for me, that would be babysitting. Like if I was the one into it, it's like, uh, like, I don't want to feel like I have to entertain you, but if you're, I hate babysitting, <laughs> but if you're happy there, the like I am. Just sitting there drinking some beer, like, okay, like I have my little shirt on or my hat or something, you know, like, okay, at least I'm just here, you know, Mm -hmm. like, where's the, is it hot when a girl is super into it and can hang with the boys and be one of the boys? You know what? It's funny you say that because I've been in situations with, uh, you know, the group of guys, the girls come out and it's a great group atmosphere. Everybody's enjoying the game, you know, whether it be a Super Bowl Sunday that you're having a party at your house or you're at a bar just watching the local team do do whatever they do and you've got that group of girls around it's kind of odd we actually there's a situation right now where i'm not going to mention any names because you know th- this one there's there's usually one who knows a lot and sometimes you get in these conversations you get you know with the boys and you're talking about you know th- this guy's propensity to drop passes in tough situations and then all of a sudden you get the one uh, one girl that goes yeah, he drops it about fifty six percent of the time, and you're like, "Wait, what?" <laughs> and you're and you're kind of you're taking. It sounds so sad and like insecure, but at this, you know, you're like, "How did she know that?" And then you're like, "Why does she know that?" And then you ask yourself, "Should I know that?" And it becomes like I mean, almost intimidating, <laughs> and you're kind of like start leaning away, and you're going, "Man, she she knows a lot. I got to be careful what I say." Because a lot of what guys do when they're watching football or baseball or golf, you know, all of a sudden we are the experts and we know everything. And we're going to tell our guys, oh, he should have done this. And then the the, the woman steps in and goes, oh, I think that. And you're like, man, she's right. Damn it. You know, and you get exposed <laughs> a little bit. And I think that's where the fear and intimidation comes in a little bit if it, is if you get exposed and you don't know as much as you uh, expect to know more than everybody else, you know, but uh, I think it's great to kind of work through the process of figuring out where everybody kind of fits in. Because I love the fact that you're even entertaining the idea of throwing on a hat, being supportive, because that goes a long way for a guy. I believe, you know, if, if, even if you're not 100% invested, you're invested enough in me to put on the hat, put on the shirt, go, you know, if something good happens, you know, when to clap and you're like, yeah, high five. I think that's great. Well, thank you. I appreciate that. I feel like that's my style. And, and, you know, I've, I've been told like, well, maybe you should get a team and maybe you should go buy, find a sport and find that. And I'm like, that just is not who I am. Like, I just don't see myself doing that. I don't want to talk baseball stats or basketball, whatever, with somebody. Like, to me, that just is like, that's the man's realm, in my opinion. Maybe I'm a little more feminine than I should be, but I just didn't grow up with it. Like, it's just not in my blood. So I always think it's interesting when I have conversations with my girlfriends who are super competitive and they know all this stuff. And I'm just like, do you guys find this attractive? And I think, like you said, to, to an extent, I'm sure it is kind of hot. It's like, damn, like I can hold a conversation with something that I love to talk about with my girl. Like that's Mm -hmm. awesome. But then, like you said, it just kind of, it can surpass a certain point where you're like, okay, now I'm just not sure that I'm comfortable talking to you about this. (laughs) Yeah, because um, I mean, I know I know my limits on pop culture. I know my limits on you know uh, interior designing. I try, you know, that's kind of where I try and compare the situation. You know, I'm I'm considered an expert in baseball, but my wife is an interior designer, so I don't ignore when she's, you know, I, you know, color spectrums or a certain shade of, you know, eggshell or, you know, what an ottoman is, you know, I, I, I try, I do my best cause I'm an idiot when it comes to decorating. My wife is awesome, but I try to 
understand and listen to the words that she's using so that I can kind of carry on a conversation. And, I, and there's been points where I've exposed myself a little too much and she'll get a giggle out of it and be like, you have no idea what you're talking about. <laughs> and, and I'll just kind of <laughs> stop there. Lane, and, dude. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yes. That's exactly what it is. So that's kind of the comparison that I try and, and work with because I know there's moments where I have conversations with her. I try and explain to her a situation on the field or, you know, in, in a contract or something like that. And I just see her eyes start to roll back or she starts to look past me and I'm going, okay, I need to stop, get out, you know, right. cause it's not benefiting <laughs> anybody. No, but she's trying to be a part of the conversation. She she's really trying is. to understand. And a part of that is it's okay. Like I think that a relationship should have more weight on values rather than, okay, do we have the same interests? Um, interests are obviously important because you want to find the common ground and you want to do things together. So if like you want to go camping all the time and I want to be at the mall, like that's probably just not going to happen. But hopefully you're both well-rounded enough and interesting enough to find something. And I always, this is like a new thing in my self-development over the last couple of years that when I'm dating somebody for real boyfriend, I say, hey, like if you have things you want me to try, I'm happy to try them as long as you do things that I want you to try. Because like my thing is country dancing and most guys don't like to dance. But if you at least try a little bit with me, like that's enough. At least you tried it. If you don't like it, that's okay. Just like me. I'll go skiing with you. If I don't like it, don't get mad at me. I tried it. Yeah. And I'll ask you, you know, isn't it the idea of somebody putting forth the effort in your interest, even though it may not take, isn't that, is that enough to really sustain or encourage a relationship? Absolutely. That's a great question. Yeah, yeah. it is. Cause it I like the shows. idea, like you're saying of trying it at least once. And if, and if it goes down in flames, you're like, Hey, I gave it my best shot. Let's try something else. You know, I think that's a great, great outlook on trying to uh, not, a, and you're not even accommodating. I don't think for the other person, you're just trying to understand or maybe offer another, you know, olive branch to try and uh, connect. Yeah. yeah. It's one of those things where I think that you, you can't say no. I mean, I guess you can, but that's a very closed mind to me. <laughs> like you, you need to, you know, if something's fun, is fun for you and I like you, like you said, you're investing in that person. So I'm happy to try it rather than just be like the princess over here and say, no, I'm not going to do this, you know? So mm -hmm. I do think that there's something to that. And that goes back to the compromise of like, okay, well you can go have, not can, that's like the worst word. You go have fun with your boys on whatever days, go watch your sports. Like I don't really want to be there anyway. And then on a day that I'm feeling a little rowdy and want to go get some beers and like have a good time and be social, then I'll go with you. And I think, how does that work in your, with your wife? Like if she, I'm sure you guys don't count back and forth, but like she totally understands that you have your time that you need to go do that. Whether it's by yourself at home, maybe in a different room or out with your friends, right? Yeah, I think you actually bring up a really good point in the fact that, you know, mood and environment kind of, you know, enhance whether whether you're going to say yes or no. Because if you are in the mood, you're feeling festive, or you like the people you're going to be around, and you like the restaurant or the bar they're going to, of course, you're going to say yeah, because there's going to be other avenues for you to interact in the situation, as opposed to just showing up, you know, God forbid at a Hooters, and you're like, okay, I'm not going there, you know, it, it, which I totally get and sit there with your beer, and you're watching the game, but guys are having fun, you're going you feel like you're on an island. And what's cool about my wife is that she understands, you know, I have friends that she doesn't like. She has friends that I don't like. And if, if she wants to go hang out with them, go, go for it. And if I want to hang out with some of the guys that I want to hang out with, she gets it too. And I think, you know, she, she's a reasonable football fan. She doesn't, this is going to sound crazy. You know, probably she does not like baseball that much. She likes the fact that it's provided us a very good, you know, living and opportunities, but, you know, for her to sit down and watch a four and a half hour game, even if, uh, even if the best color analyst is on the broadcast <laughs> myself, she doesn't watch it. So it's kind of funny for me to get back from road trips and go, babe, did you see that game? She's like, no, I wasn't paying attention, but I, I get it. So her being a reasonable football fan, we have found a commonality and a community that we're able to have. She throws a Super Bowl party. You know, she initiates it. She sends out the invite. She preps for it. She gets ready for it. She's like, let's go. I'm so excited. But, you know, she's in control of that aspect of it. So she gets to bring her 
her part of the uh, relationship to it. And I get to bring my guys and their girls over and we get to watch football. So it's kind of, a, it's, it's kind of a fun, unique way that we kind of go about things, but it is kind of, uh, you know, if I did that for baseball or a world series, she'd be like, man, eh, I'm good. Uh, interesting. So is that just the sport itself? I mean, baseball, no offense. And I've already said this to you before. Like, no, you can be really boring. honest. I literally go there for the beer. That is it. Maybe to get on the jumbotron, please put me on. Yep. <laughs> That's about it. <laughs> yep. No, it's, it, it's funny. I, it, and the fun part about, well, so I can't do any more for my wife. She, she is as big a baseball fan as she's going to be, which isn't very big. Uh, if she comes to a game, it's because the matchup is good or because she knows, like you said, there's St. Arnold Brewery is down the left field line. Uh, even when she, you know, it's kind of funny you said, because even when she, when I played for the San Diego Padres, there was a sushi restaurant down the right field line and I'd be playing in the game and in third base, I could see the family section and she would say, I'm coming to the game tonight. And I'm going, wow, my wife is coming to the game. So I would play and I'm looking up there and I can't see her. I'm like, where the heck? So I learned that she came for the sushi down the right field line. So I learned that I would look down the right field line. Oh, there's, yeah, she's having a drink, sake, you know, whatever. But uh, it's a little off subject, but uh, you know, I, I, I got completely lost in that situation, but uh, yeah, I am, it's not, uh, I'm not going to force her anything she doesn't like, but uh, I know that there are other purposes for going to a game, but uh, the fact that you have another outlet to go to a game is great. Yeah. And like you said, she's there and she's, I mean, it's not her passion, but you don't mm -hmm. like her for her passion of baseball. No, I love her. I guess I should say love. Yeah. We um, wouldn't have gotten far. Yeah. I mean, it's kind of like when you're finding a business partner, right? Like you don't want to have the same strengths. You each need to have your Good own point. set of strengths and you need to be able to complement each other. And I think that if you were both super into baseball or whatever sport, I think it just, I don't know. I just feel like it would create friction and tension. I guess it's fun in like a competitive flirty way for a little bit, but I don't know. I, I'll never know. I will never have that experience, but it just kind of seems like one of those things where there needs just needs to be a happy ground. I, I like what you guys do. Like, I like that you found the, the commonality of football. Cause that's something that yeah. feeds you. No, it does. You know, I, I really enjoy watching football in the off season. Now golf is another thing. I love golf. I love playing it, watching it. Uh, I can't convince my wife to sit down and watch a golf event with me. She it absolutely so checks out. Yeah. yeah. I, I would rather I, I I choose. It. I'm choosing baseball for sure. <laughs> well, there we go. Now, baby steps. Now we got you going towards baseball. That's good. Yeah, for sure. Like, there's no way golf is. I have dated somebody who made me watch golf all the time. I'm like, I'd rather yeah, but at the same, you know, at the same time, I can't. You know, if you don't, if I think what guys sometimes, you know, if you don't like football, you don't like me. That doesn't make any sense. You Correct. know, it's not a personal. Uh, you know, it's not a personal attack or a personal issue. It's just I don't like golf. I mean, there's. My wife has a friend who's on Beverly uh, Housewives of Beverly Hills. Guess what I do? I, I find something else to do. I'm not into that. It's kind of odd. I mean, I love the girl that's on there, but I'm not going to, you know, so she sits down and watches her show, but uh, it's, it's not because I don't like my wife or think right. that that identifies my <laughs> wife. You know, it's just, I just don't, I don't feel like I'm going to spend my next hour watching these people bicker, you know? Yeah, I actually, for the record, have heard that, like, statistically, I don't know the number, but if you watch that show together as a couple, it actually can create problems in your marriage. Can we just, like, throw that out there? Yeah. Because you're I'm learning you bad behavior. Out. Hello? Oh, my gosh. The worst behavior. <laughs> I do not yeah. watch that shit. I think it's terrible. Not a chance of it ever on in my TV. Absolutely not. Uh, now, yeah, The Bachelor, so, on the other hand. No, I'm just kidding. The Bachelor. Oh, my gosh. I don't watch that either. I don't really watch reality TV. Okay. Yeah. Why not? I'd rather, I'd rather read a book or work. That, that's why you're much more intelligent than I am. <laughs> <laughs> I think you're intelligent in your own realm. I'm intelligent in my own realm. <laughs> yeah, just staying in our lane, like we said, right there. I, I, it's very narrow, but I can stay in it. <laughs> yes. I think this has been good. I mean, it just is a quick overview of of how to kind of not, like you said in the beginning, like not let sports be a wedge between two people who want to be together. Cause I don't think that it's an end all be all. And I don't think that it determines the quality of a relationship. I think everybody needs to be understanding of the other's position. 
No, I think you're absolutely right. It, it's it's respect, it's understanding, but it's also and in order to be successful as a team, you have to be a strong individual. And I think it's okay to have those individual characteristics, but it's also me understanding that my wife has those same uh, individual characteristics that make her as great as she is. And it's making those work together. It does take time and uh, there are hiccups along the way, but uh, it's, it's all worth it in the end. But uh, it, it ultimately just uh, loving that person for who they are is what it's all about. And I've been very lucky and very blessed in an intense environment of uh, professional sports uh, to have somebody that that uh, allows me to go out and be good at what I am. Especially because I don't, I mean, there's a lot of games in baseball, a oh, hundred and something. And oh, yeah. for if you're gone, however much of the year, that's a lot. That's a lot for her to be at home and take care of the house and the kids and not have you around. And yeah, like, Kudos to her, man. <laughs> oh, trust me. In the middle of this quarantine, I guarantee you there's probably been a handful of moments where she's going, God, if they just had a road trip right now, that'd be great. <laughs> <laughs> she's like, I love you, but. <laughs> yep. <laughs> That's funny. Yeah, yeah, well, it's always give and take. And it's like you're always getting new situations thrown at you and you got to figure them out together. And like you said, if you have two great people who want to be together, you stay focused on the end goal. And something is, I shouldn't say as little as sports or else I wouldn't even be having this conversation with you because it is a big topic. I mean, it is a huge topic to me. It's crazy so, how big it actually is, though. That's what's wild. Is. And you know what we did not touch on is going to live games. That oh, yeah. Called. Yeah. Live games, Go, going to an arena, going to the field, going to wherever you go to watch it. Like I'm always down for that. I think it's so much fun. Again, you get your beer and you have your crew and everybody's cheering and you've got all your, your gear on. And it's just such a different, it's more, obviously it's more social, but I think it's just as fun as having people over to watch a game. The game itself mm -hmm. is just less engaging because on a TV and you don't have it right in front of your face. So maybe that could be a good way to get your significant other involved in the sports. Cause if you're there, maybe they'll at least, enjoy that a few times out of a season? No, I, I completely agree. You know, at home you have distractions. You have the office, you could go, or a book you could go read, or, you know, your friends down the street, or you could go outside. But like you said, when you go to the arena, you're kind of in the environment. So you get to, you get to feel the emotion and the passion of other fans. These, these places have done such a great job with food and beer to be able to entertain in that way. And they've done a, I've, I'm finding that more stadiums are doing more communal type activities in, in certain areas of the ballpark or football stadium. And uh, to your point, my wife, who cannot stand watching golf on TV, loves going to golf tournaments. You know, we've been to the Masters three times and she is like, when are we going to the course? You know, it's getting on the course, the beauty of it, uh, the environment, the people, the the, you know, the anxiety of watching a guy hit a golf ball and then it's going over and getting an azalea and seeing how the right. azaleas taste this year or what uh, imported beer they have. You know, it's it, it's really cool and you get to walk around, see it from different angles. And uh, I, I think you're exactly right. And I appreciate you bringing that up too, because, you know, that's just another way that you can try to put yourself out there a little bit and try something new by being in the environment. Yeah, I'm with you on that. Actually, this is, Nobody cares, but I'm going to tell you anyway. On my bucket list, I want to go to a Cubs game, and I want to go to a Green Bay Packers game. In their yeah. fields, I kind of want to do the Green Bay Packers, like, when it's cold. It doesn't need to be frigid. <laughs> I know. I know. I'm crazy. It doesn't need to be frigid, but I do want to go because I'm from Arizona. I've lived here almost my whole life, and I just think it'd be really fun to experience that, like, standing there kind of like, oh, my God, when is this going to be over? But it's so much fun because – they are diehard fans and I think it would be such a blast and it's like, okay, well maybe that would turn me on to something football related because I know what it's like to be in that arena. Like not that the Cardinals aren't good. I don't even know if they're good to be honest with you, but <laughs> our sports here are just not as intense as they are yeah. in other cities. No, but the idea of going and doing something, I us say you do that with a boyfriend that you have, you're creating a moment. And, I, you know, those are great for connection points to move you forward or to share with each other. So I think, you know, those are great ideas to be able to want that. But you're a little crazy for me to go uh, sit <laughs> in, uh, you know, the frozen tundra, as they call it, of Green Bay right in the middle of winter. Even I, I love football. There ain't no way I want to do that. <laughs> nah, -uh. I would gladly I watch the Packers in Arizona. <laughs> right. Exactly. You can watch the game here. 
Yeah, I don't know. It's just I've been to um, some college football games that were a really big deal. I lived in Italy for a year, so I went to soccer games there. And like, oh. yeah, the the excitement, the songs that are sung, like how things just happen there. It's like, wow, now I understand why you are such a football fan or why you're a college football fan specifically is because this is what your experience is. Like I went to Arizona State University. There ain't nothing like that there. No, there's <laughs> nothing like that there. Same with, you know, the Diamondbacks. Well, you played for the Diamondbacks. Yep. Oh, that's a great question. This is totally off topic. Like what was it like in different uh, teams in uh, home games to play with the different energies? Like, is there a ranking of that? Um, there's, there's obviously better places than other, uh, you know, the Jersey over my shoulder, the expos, they don't even exist anymore. And just mm-hmm. give you a reference point when, when they, when I broke into the big leagues, there were about three or 4,000 fans there. And then you go to the world series with the Chicago white Sox, and there's about 45,000 people there. So yeah, the more fans, the more intensity is obviously a lot better for both the, the fan and the player. Uh, so Chicago, I, I agree with you in the sense that uh, going to a Cubs game is great as a fan. Uh, I hated playing there just because the field is so old and rickety and gross, but, uh, everything that I know and some of the stuff you're talking about, as far as experience and going to some of these places, I think that it, you know, Wrigley has great social atmosphere outside the stadium. And then you go in for the, for the atmosphere of the game. I think that's awesome. Then after the game, you can go to a walk across the street and go to a bar. I think green Bay is the same way with the way they tailgate and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. That's how you kind of create and generate an all inclusive male, female, I think type experience is being able to have all of that at one place. Amen to that. (laughs) Well said. (laughs) All right. Well, now I think we've covered everything. So I just want (laughs) to. Sorry for keeping you on here for so long. No, I loved it. That was such a good conversation. So thank you so much. Again, my name is Lauren House, and this is Beyond the House. We've got Jeff Bloom here. And I just want to say thank you so much. And I hope that this helps even a little bit with some sports and relationships tying the two together. So thank you. Thanks, Jeff. Oh, my pleasure. Thank you.